Thank you for getting GeoCement from GeoPolymer International. In this short video, we will instruct you on how to mix your geopolymers to create a stronger, smarter, more sustainable cement for a wide variety of small and large applications. Let's get into it. First of all, here's what you'll need. Your kit contains mineral powder, labeled as part A, liquid silicate, labeled as part B, and hardening powder, labeled as part C. Together, these make our glue known as the binder. These materials, when mixed or separate, are non-toxic, but still avoid ingestion, contact with the eyes, long-term skin contact, or inhalation of airborne particulates. To avoid mild skin irritation, wear gloves during the process or wash your skin immediately after contact. You'll also need an aggregate or filler for the glue to bind. This is essentially the backbone of your geocement. Information about quantities can be read on screen. Aggregates are typically sand or rock, and fillers are either materials finer than sand or non-mineral materials. In this video, we will be working with standard, commercially available sand as our aggregate to make geocement. So this is everything that you're mixing. Now, you'll need a way to mix them. For larger applications, we can mix these materials with a mortar mixer available at most hardware stores and a five gallon bucket. For smaller applications, you can use a kitchen mixer like this one. We'll be showing shots of both in this instructional video. Lastly, you'll need some sort of apparatus to cover your material while it hardens. Here, we're casting our material in a mold that's sealed in a plastic bag. You can also use silicone spray or plastic wrap. What matters is that the material hardens with minimal exposure to air or else water could evaporate during the hardening process and that will result in a cracked or weakened final product. So once you have your mixing materials, your mixing device, and your container for the setting process, we're ready to get started. First, measure out the parts in your kit to the following proportions by weight. 60% part B, 5% part C, and 35% part A. Pour part B into part A, then mix both at high speed for 10 minutes to set off the polymerization reaction and obtain a fluid binder. That fluid binder should look something like this. Now add part C to the binder and mix it all on medium speed for two minutes. For the best final product, it's important to mix things at the recommended speeds. Once parts A, B, and C are adequately mixed, we can add our aggregate or filler. Mix all parts at low to medium speed for between three and five minutes until they look something like this or like this. It depends on the aggregate or filler you're using as well as the scale of the application, but across the board, what matters is that you have a consistent texture. Now, you can cast the material into its final destination. This rectangular thing is a vibration table. A light dusting of silicon spray can be used to prevent the geopolymer from sticking to molds. Using vibrating tables or larger scale concrete vibrators has the added benefit of making the geopolymer flow more easily and of allowing for air bubbles to escape, though this is not essential for most applications. Now, just remember to seal your mixture in an airtight container before you leave it to harden. In this example of a small application, we're using a plastic bag. As we said before, larger applications can use silicone spray, plastic wrap, or anything else to achieve this, but what matters is that the material hardens with minimal exposure to air or else the end product will be weaker. Make sure to clean all equipment with tap water before the mixture is hardened on it. It's okay to put geopolymers down the drain in small particles, but remember to filter out larger solids, which can then be recycled and added to your next mix. Now that we're all done, your material will be hard within hours at room temperature. To reach maximum strength, store the covered or sealed material for at least 28 days at room temperature or heat it at 170 degrees Fahrenheit for 24 hours in an oven. For more information, consult the GeoCement spec sheet or reach out to info at gpi.earth. Once you understand the way that this basic formula behaves, we encourage you to experiment with new additives to match the specific colors, textures, strength, hardening time, and other characteristics you're looking for. And please, let us know how it goes.